internet, my name is Lave and I watched Whitney, which is directed by Kevin MacDonald, who's made quite a few feature films. You've probably heard of some of them. The one I think of most when I think of Kevin MacDonald is The Last King of Scotland and the other documentary he did about Bob Marley. Now he's giving the same treatment to Whitney Houston, charting her entire life from her early church soul singing days to her first TV appearance, her meteoric rise to fame, to her untimely death all told by her friends and family and those who knew her best. Now with that in mind, I wouldn't say that this film takes an in-depth look to Whitney Houston's music or how she created it. Don't get me wrong, Whitney Houston songs are in there, or at least some of them are in there. But unlike, say, the Amy Winehouse documentary, Amy, which I felt struck a nice balance between exploring her music and her lyrics and the meaning behind it and the tragic circumstances behind her life and death, Whitney, while it does acknowledge how talented and what an incredible voice she had, she did, oh my goodness, this film seems to have an agenda to find out how and why it ended all so tragically. Which isn't a criticism, it's just a personal preference of mine that they do explore the creative process behind the music. I find that stuff really inspiring. But Kevin MacDonald has taken a forensic approach to this project and seems determined to discover the truth behind it all. And he interviews everyone from her mum to her brothers to her friends and her colleagues. And like Amy, a familiar story emerges of family feuds, the mother is very much the driving force behind her fame, the dad is in it maybe not for the best reasons, finances, friends and freeloaders, the drug abuse and the ignorance of the studio bigwigs who just outright neglect her when she needed it the most. They just don't do anything for her, they do nothing, nothing. I shouldn't joke around because this film certainly isn't. In fact, there is a really hard hitting moment when it turns the camera back on the media and the American paparazzi who ridiculed her in her time of need. It takes shots at Saturday Night Live and American Dad who really, really took the piss and it isn't in the best taste. And I praise the film for doing that and for actively going out and interviewing the people who were so close to her in real life. The interviews in this, I wanna say, are almost like interrogations. Maybe that's too strong, but they're certainly probing. You actually hear the interviewer on a number of occasions repeating the questions, trying to goad the truth out of them. And in a sense, the interviews almost turn into confessionals. Apart from Bobby Brown, who downright shuts down when he's asked about the drug abuse. All I'll say is silence speaks louder than words. Surprisingly, the film does come up with some intriguing answers, stuff that I was completely unaware of. Maybe that's because I'm based in the UK. Whenever I think of Whitney Houston, I obviously think of The Bodyguard and that duet she did with Mariah Carey for Prince of Egypt. She basically was the soundtrack to every school disco and every slow dance I ever had. So I didn't know that she had a lesbian relationship with her manager plus friend Robin and there is one huge revelation which I'm not going to spoil but if it's true there's no wonder why there's some deep-rooted psychological trauma there. In terms of its presentation it's not reinventing the wheel it's just very solid it takes a chronological approach and charts events that happen in her life in parallel to events that happen throughout the various decades from the 80s and the 90s and beyond. In general I really like that approach because it makes it feel like it's a time capsule but on occasions some of the visual analogies were a bit too on the nose for example there's a moment when she starts rising to fame and she's launching off and you see the NASA space shuttle launching into space it's like yeah that's not too subtle it's also clear that Kevin McDonald has been given unprecedented access to all of the archive material so you do get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff and home footage which is a nice touch on occasion, some of the floating head interviews, I noticed a couple of jump cuts, which I didn't think looked that professional. I was like, come on, that reminds me of YouTube videos. It's just not professional. But overall, this film does achieve its objective of exploring who she was and how this tragedy happened. You do get to see the best of Whitney Houston, but you also get to see the worst of Whitney Houston as well. The most tragic thing that this film highlights is that Whitney Houston's demons were passed down onto her daughter as well. And even though 
Whitney Houston undoubtedly loved her daughter. She was in such a bad way that she couldn't see that she was having such a negative impact on her daughter. And we all know how that turned out. It's just full of tragedy, this film. And I walked out pretty depressed. So that's my thoughts on Whitney and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. As I say, this film is competently made and thorough in its execution and it achieves its objectives of getting to the truth and exploring why this tragedy happened. I just wish maybe it did juxtapose that a bit more with some of her music and, and her legacy, the stuff that we really should remember her for. So thanks very much for watching my review of Whitney. I really do appreciate it and I will always love you. So <laughs> that's shit. So thanks very much for watching my review of Whitney. I really do appreciate it. If you can give this video a like and don't forget to share the lave. Subscribe.